Jinja is a popular Python templating language that is used in a lot of Python web frameworks. I know several high traffic Django sites that use Jinja for templating. Among the reasons is Jinja's templates render faster than the built in Django template. The interesting thing is Jinja is inspired by Django's templating. This is good news for us as Django developers because that means the templating syntax is going to be very familiar. That is also part of the reason it is popular in the Django community. This video is going to show you how to set up Jinja in your Django project and a couple of other things you can do to start converting your templates over. The great thing about the specific third party Django app we're going to use to import Jinja into our project is it helps by falling back to Django templates so you can migrate over time instead of when one fell swoop. The key thing to note about loading up Jinja is you will need to change your template loaders to the new Jinja template loaders and add a third party app to your installed apps folder, followed up by converting your templates and your URLs. The simplest way to convert your template is to open them up and save them with a .jinja file extension instead of .html, then run them until they don't error fixing things as you go. This may sound odd, but unless you already know Jinja, you have some learning to do with the nuances of the differences between HTML and Jinja files. So let's go ahead and get started. To get started with actually using the new Jinja templates, we need to install Jinja and our third-party Django app. Fortunately, if we install the third-party Django app, it'll install Jinja automatically since it's a dependency. Just doing a pip install works just fine for installing Jinja. I already have it installed, so this is the result that we get. The next thing that we need to do is add Django Jinja to our settings file and to our template loaders. The template loaders that we're going to use is consistent with our file system loader and our app loader. The app loader will go into our apps like normal, check in the templates folder for our templates, and then fall down into hitting file system base templates. It works just the same as the Django templates, we're just using the, the Django Jinja app. That's all that we need to do for our settings file. The next thing we need to do is start editing our templates. The simplest way to do things in converting from HTML to Jinja is just to rename all of your files or make copies of them and just name them as Jinja. There we go, the three templates that we're going to deal with are moved over to the new Jinja file type. The next thing that we need to do is start from the top down is how I like to go about it and just start with our base template and make the necessary changes. Fortunately everything in our file can stay the same except the biggest problem that we're going to run into is doing our reverse URL lookup. So let's go ahead and convert our URL to our Jinja URL. and we're done with our base.jinja file. The next thing to do is to move over our index file. In our index jinja file we're going to need to change our extends to extend base.html to base.jinja. We also need to change our get absolute URL call to an actual function call. Since everything that is a function call in Jinja needs to actually be function calls. Item.title can be left alone. And then finally, we need to work with our date. The issue here is we don't have a date filter like normal to display our due date. We need to instead call the Python string format function and pass in what we want it to look like. And there we go. That should be all that we have to do for our index page. A note on the string format time that in Jinja you do have a subset of Python that you can call instead of solely relying on the Django templating and the constructs that are inherent in that. And then finally having done our index page, our base page, it's time to edit our item page. And the only thing we have to do here is change our extends from base.html to base.jinja. 
There we go, we've edited all of our template files appropriately. The only final thing we have to do is go tweak on our views and the template names. Here we're using generic class-based views to do all of our view functionality so that it can make life a lot easier. As you can note on the template name, we're using index.html, and then below we're using item.html. Since we're no longer using HTML for our Django templates, and we're going to use the Jenja templates, we need to convert these to Jenja by changing it from index.html to index.jenja and item.jenja. And there we go. That should be it. We should be ready to look at our site using the Jenja templates. There we go. We have our Jenja templates running and we have everything working like normal.